Hi, B. Hi. Hi. 哎，董老师你好，我待会儿是用英文先介绍一下你，呃，基、oh. 本上就是念你的那个，就大概简单的那个念一下。OK。可能不会念全， oh, 没问题。很多。然后，另外我们的 speaker，、oh. 我们的 discussant 上来了吗？我刚才好像看到他了。哦、oh, ，在我在。啊、oh.。哎呀，多谢连着两次帮我们那个 discuss， 然后对那个哦，没事没事，对我可能也就不用那个再念一遍了。上次可能就介绍过，我就跟大家说我们上次是的，是的，好的好的好了。然后那个就你们你们有没有底下就是说嗯那个就是大概是怎么安排时间什么的是，是就是你们有没有讨论是怎么去那个呃。你你就让编辑讲，其实不知道 talk 的时间是多长，就是五十分钟到一个小时都可以 ，one hour 或五十分钟都可以。Okay, okay. Okay. Up to 你们自己，你们怎么觉得你都行。然后我只是就介绍一下，然后你们就 take charge 就好了。OK， 好。那那个 ，The Bing，Can you please sh 呃、uh, share your slides, share your screen? Sure. sure. Okay, can you guys see it now? Yeah.、Uh, All right. Not a full screen. Maybe you can try to make it. Yeah. The photo. Okay. 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 Our speakers. Yeah, let let me get started.、Uh, welcome to our ARL seminar today.、Um, uh, first of all,、um, everyone, happy Chinese New Year, 春节快乐 Today, it's our great honor to have um, uh, Professor Bing Dong、um, to lead our ARL seminar. Let me first briefly introduce uh, Professor Dong. Um, he's a Associate Professor of the Beijing International Center for Mathematical Research at Peking University.、Uh, he received his bachelor's degree from Peking University and a, a PhD from the University of、um, California at Los Angeles in 2009.、Uh, Dr. Bingdong has made an important contribution to the mathematical modeling and arithmetic design in image processing and the data analysis.、Um, Uh, he will introduce his recent work about、uh, those areas, and um, uh, Dr. Uh, Bing Dong received the, the Qiu Shi Outstanding Young <laughs> Award from、uh, Hong Kong Qiu Shi Science and Technologies Foundation in 2014. He's also an invited speaker of ICM 2022.、Um, today we also have uh, our uh, discussion. The, Uh, Dr. Xing Wang,、uh, we're very grateful for、um, Xing、uh, to work as our discussant、uh, um, consecutively the second time.、Um, uh, as yeah, as you can see the slides,、um, Professor Dong will talk about、uh, some applications of deep reinforcement learning to imaging and the numerical PDEs today.、Um, without further ado,、uh, Bing, it's all yours. All right.、Um, thanks for the. Uh, uh... Uh, thanks for the introduction, and 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 again, happy Chinese New Year to everyone,、um, and、uh, and and also thanks、uh, for Professor Zhu for inviting me. Actually, I was in the、uh, I I was in Xin's talk、uh, a couple of weeks ago,、uh, and it was very very exciting and very interesting talk on how to apply deep reinforcement learning to uh, to uh, computer vision uh, task. Uh, that's what, which you know also one of my research、uh, interests. So.、Um, 
so after the you know after last time's seminar, you know, I discussed with uh, Professor Zhu briefly on uh, on WeChat, and then uh, I decided to uh, just collect the work that I did uh, on using deep reinforced learning for for imaging and also for numerical PDEs. Um, uh, you know, just just to share with you, it's uh, it's it's still very preliminary attempts, and uh, and I did those work actually. And part of the reason that I did those work, you know, was to to force myself, me and my team, to learn about deep reinforced learning, which I think is a very exciting, um, you know, uh, field, especially their applications in you know, scientific computing is is what I think. Uh, well, at, at least it attracted me a lot, um, and. Uh, so, um, so this is the plan today. I'm, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna go over some uh, uh, just uh, you know our you know, our interpretations, uh, you know of uh, uh, of machine learning and and reinforced learning and and how you know how we actually we uh, we use optimal control uh, to help us to interpret you know all those um, uh, exciting subjects uh, in AI, uh, and and then I'll share three of our past works um, on applying deep reinforced learning to, Im and, you know, to image processing, uh, to numerical PDs, and also to, uh, to imaging. Um, so uh, because of time, I will, uh, and, uh, I will not focus, you know, I, will, I will not talk too much about details. Actually, the, you know, the, the student who had uh, worked out all the details, and you can find details you know, uh, in our paper, or you can look at our code or, or, or contact you know, the students. They know more about details uh, than me. But today, I'm going to talk you know mainly on um you know how sh how should we pick problems uh in scientific and because those problems are not standard uh you know problems for reinforcement learning um so so whether you know what kind of problem that we should pick and and what's the strength of reinforced learning you know versus supervised learning okay and, and how should we actually formulate those problems and you know in terms of you know markup decision process and how do we you know how should we uh, determine, you know, uh, how should we, you know, uh, uh, model the state, uh, you know, the uh, select the actions and also the reward function. Those are, you know, quite important um, uh, if you want to apply deep reinforcement learning to uh, to those, you know, uh, uh, problems. So, so those are the things that I want to uh, focus on. Um, and then I, I think, uh, you know, we, we will have time to discuss. Then I would, I would like to uh, to discuss, you know, possible you know, future directions that, uh, you know, how should we apply Deep RL um, to some really challenging, you know, problems in scientific computing or computation imaging, uh, in general. Okay. So first of all, um, you know, I, I don't need to convince you guys that the deep learning has a, you know, has a, a very deep impact and has been very successful in many fields. And uh, and 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 more recently, I actually for the past uh, four or five years, we haven't been focusing on applying machine learning to scientific computing or or science in in general. Um, and uh, their success mainly due to you know two factors. Uh, the first factor is that they are they are able to, to fit very complex mappings in high dimensional space. So so high dimension nonlinear uh, is is a very common challenge in you know computation science in in, in general. Um, and uh, uh, deep neural networks, if you assuming that you have no problem of training them. That's a big assumption, of course, but assuming that you can train them, and they are they are able to fit very complex mappings in high-dimensional spaces. So that's that's one. Another one is that I think it's quite important is that they can make very fast inferences with about right accuracy. Um, you know, you know, I I, I come from uh, you know numerical you know uh, or scientific or numerical analysis uh, background, uh, where you know if you took a graduate course in your market analysis then you know we, we do a lot of you know accuracy uh, you know analysis and 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 when we talk about convergence well you need to get very close to to round of error which is about you know 10 to negative 13 or 14. um but uh you know for machine learning it's you know you you know you don't have to really go to that accuracy right because if you, you want to go to that accuracy you lose a lot of a lot of things um, and you know, either you could only model very simple, you know, mappings, uh, or you spend a lot of time, you know, trying to push to the, you know, to the limit of that of that accuracy. But if you're okay with ten to negative one or negative two relative errors, well, the things change drastically. Okay, and and I think that's the I think that's the beauty of the current, you know, the neural the neural network based machine learning that enable it to 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 fit very complex mappings but with about right accuracy so that they can make very fast inference. If you look at the successes of machine learning applying to, to science, you know, organ, you know, various science or, or engineering applications, these are the keys. This, this, this is my own um, interpretation, okay. 
uh, among all of those successful uh, you know, successes, I think what perhaps most exciting development is, is how we can now use AI or machine learning uh, to assist innovations. Uh, not replacing us to do innovations, but to assist us innovations. We have plenty of examples of that. Um, for example, AlphaFo2, the potential, um, and 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 uh, and, and biotis discovery. Okay, this is from biology and chemistry, and also in physics, we have system identification, uh, simulations, and also AI can assist us to make you know quantum experiment you know, to help us to to decide you know quantum experiments, the settings for the quantum experiment before we actually you know do those experiments, which you know, could be very very expensive. Okay, and also very recently, actually, we had this this you know discussion in our center. Um, End of last year, uh, you know how machine learning can really help us to advance pure mathematics, um, which, which I think it's very very promising. Actually, you know, uh, uh, me and uh, and some of my uh, my you know fellow workers here at the center, and also uh, you know my colleagues in pure math over the world, we are now actually working on it uh, to see you know whether we can identify those you know, very important problems where we can actually encode the problems and use machine learning to help to help them. Uh, you know, quickly search among you know, uh, billions of you know uh, cases and to find patterns. Okay, so that that basically summarizes what actually Nature did, uh, DeepMind did in their uh, in their Nature paper. Okay, so uh, those are all the you know exciting part of uh, deep learning, but we all know that there are a lot of challenges of deep learning uh, as well. And uh, uh, and uh, well, the list can be very long, but I just summarized the three of them that I think it's. Uh, is most you know most important for uh, for the work that I'm interested in. Uh, so first of all is is, is accuracy okay, or in statistical terms generalization, and we don't quite understand the inner workings of stochastic training. Uh, why you know how how you know how we actually over, you know, avoid overfitting sometimes. And sometimes we couldn't, but sometimes we can avoid overfitting. Uh, whether that's that's the uh, uh, the uh, inductive bias from the model or or, or implicit bias of the algorithm. You know, or you know, maybe it's loss that actually uh, plays an important role. Actually, we're not very clear on that. Um, a lot of work has been, a lot of very exciting work has been done along this direction, but um, it's uh, still quite, quite, quite a bit far away from actually guiding us in, uh, in, in, in model design, also the algorithmic design. Okay, and also model robustness. There are two different aspects: the serial robustness and, uh, and and the robustness in terms of distribution shift. Uh, it's it's actually quite important if you want to you know land the model that's actually trained from your lab, uh, you know to you know to uh, to practice. And you often face the problem of model robustness um, and mostly distribution shift. Um, and uh, um, that's another issue. And a third uh, and third is interpretability. Well, it's there are different facets of uh, interpretability. Uh, but the, the you know the interpretability that I'm interested in is how we can actually use the model to assist uh, uh, you know uh, in, in scientific to assist human in scientific discovery. That actually makes the interpretability issue easier because sometimes you know we don't ask causal you know uh, causal questions in terms of you know causal inference. And just like the paper that I, that I briefly mentioned, you know the, the you know the uh, the nature paper that they the mind did. They, you know they only use machine learning to quickly you know find uh, find patterns so that interaction between uh, you know machine learning models with human are actually quite important. Okay, so those are the interpretabilities that uh, uh, that I'm mostly interested in. Okay, so so to to tackle those problems, at least from an empirical uh, you know point of view, I think a very promising you know perspective is that we should actually combine uh, you know the handcraft models. Uh, that is, you know, e either based on you know mathematical derivations or statistical you know derivations, you know all, all those things that we're very familiar with before you know before uh, deep learning. Okay, combine it with actually data driven uh, approaches um, and, um, and 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 the mathematical framework that actually guide at least guide guide our team uh, to you know to do research is optimal control. I think it's a very suitable framework to interpret a lot of machine learning. Um, uh, you know modalities, uh, and and which I will you know I, I, I'll dive a little bit into details in the next uh, couple of pages. Okay, so first of all, why we could use optimal control or con you, know, you know to 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 look at deep learning, and, and how uh, you know deep neural networks you know can be related to a dynamic system. So um, it 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 started with the uh, you know with the residual networks and how you know people interpret residual networks uh, in terms of you know um, not 
ODEs and um, um, and and optimal control. And and I think this started with uh, you know uh, with the work done by uh, Weinan Yi uh, uh, Weinan Yi's group and also by uh, by uh, Heber and Rufato around 2016 and 2017, uh, where you know they they they, uh, they observe that you can actually regard the residual network as a forward Euler discretization of OD. Okay, so that's basically their uh, observations, and and then training a deep uh, ResNet, you know, can be regarded as training a, 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 a you know solving an optimal control problem, uh, where this dynamic system, okay, takes the you know, input image as as its you know starting point is the, as its internalization and evolve it through this dynamic system and the, and the, the end you have this terminal loss okay that determines you know uh, the you know this could be the cross valid you know uh, cross entropy loss uh, and and you have certain you know running cost okay which could be the weight decay or or, or other you know regularization that you want to uh, induce on the control parameter which is u okay that's the parameters. Uh, you know that that you have at each layer, okay, and you just connect them, you know, all of them, collect collect all of them together. This T is just continuum version of the layer, okay. So that's optimal control perspective uh, and 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 dynamic system, you know, uh, interpretation of deep residual networks. Um, and uh, and and later we have in in 2018, you know, we uh, we found that well, not only residual networks, but also some other deep network. You know, definitely not not all of them. Just we we found some of them can also be interpreted as, and yet different discretizations of uh, you know uh, temp different temporal discretizations of ODEs. Okay, and that's one thing that we found that in in the discrete setting they are actually approximating uh, uh, ODEs just using different schemes and different you know different from uh, forward Euler, and also if you have you know random uh, you know uh, you know. You, you inject some randomness, you know, to the to the structure. Then you can actually show that. Well, we 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 actually use two examples, you know, to show that you can actually prove that this discrete dynamics weakly converges to the uh, uh, to an SDE, and, and so that training those networks can be interpreted as stochastic optimal control. Um, and 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 I think more importantly is that if we uh, if if we you know start from the continuum and use a different discretization, different temporal discretization, you know, we can actually create a new architecture, right? You can create tons of new architectures. So that's why I said that this, you know, we bridge discrete ODE with, uh, you know, with uh, with deep CNS and, 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 and suggest that, well, you can try to use numerical ODE schemes to inspire new architecture. So those are the, so this is one of the example that we demonstrate that this is, you know, effective on CIFAR 10, CIFAR 100, and this is the example uh, on uh, a new uh, image net, okay? It, it does very simple, you know, changes to the original rest. And also, if your dynamic systems um, is not a discrete ODE, okay, it's if it's an optimization algorithm, right? It, because you know, for optimization algorithm, it's an integer algorithm. You can write it into this this dynamic system, and and you can actually train this dynamics. You can steer this dynamics, and so that you know it, it can minimize a certain loss. And, and this actually even earlier than you know the work of you know all of this ResNet. Um, and I think the earliest work that I can find was uh, was done by Gregory Lacan in 2010, uh, where they showed that you can actually unroll. It just you know unroll is just a you know it's it's not you know you're not really unrolling. It's just thinking that it's it's unrolled. It's a feed forward network um, um, of a you know optimization algorithm either to a self shooting algorithm to be precise. And they say that okay, so if you train those networks, okay, um, and and you can actually uh, significantly speed up. Optimization. Okay, that's the, their original purpose. And then later, uh, this is the work by uh, by Yang Sun, Li, and Xu. Uh, they show that well, actually, you can you can unroll, you know, a lot of you know, uh, uh, unroll and ADMM, and and they they you know, they call it ADMM net, and so that they can actually you know uh, do uh, uh, MRI or image uh, reconstruct medical imaging uh, better. Okay. Um, and uh, because of time, I won't go into details, but I can point out, point out two very nice review papers, uh, one on optimal control perspective and, and deep learning, and, and one on unroll dynamics uh, for, uh, for signal and image processing, okay? And of course, this discrete dynamics could come from discretization of PDs. So that this is another line of work that we did where we showed that, well, the CN can also be related to the discrete discretization or numerical schemes of PDs. And, and and we create a a class of of deep CNNs. Uh, we call it PD nets. Uh, where well, well, the original reason that we design PD nets is, you know, is to to be able to uh, to just uh, to estimate 
uh, you know, differential equation that drives uh, that drives a certain dynamics. We only have the observed, you know, uh, discrete dynamics. Those are the data that we collect, um, and and we want to, you know, we want to actually interpret those data and and try to suggest possible analytical forms, uh, you know, of those of dynamics. And of, uh, and of course, once we train that, we can actually make very fast inferences. So this is also a simulator uh, rather than just an estimator. Okay, so so you can do inverse problems, but also um, if your discrete dynamics, you know, actually comes from a, you know mimics a, a, a you know a discretization, a finite difference discretization. This is also the key idea of PD nets as well that you can actually use it to solve PDs. Okay, so and 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 if you want to learn a solver rather than just by total by design a solver, okay? And, and you can set this, this control parameter U properly, okay? So, so for all of those examples, the key is that, uh, first of all, you need to choose your backbone model. That is the original dynamic system that you, that you start with. And then you need to select the controls that you want to you know, learn from the data, okay? And also you need to control a proper loss. So this is another uh, very nice review on data-driven uh, inverse problems uh, you know, written by Simon Orridge and his, uh, and, his, and his colleagues. So basically this describes, I think, um, a lot of uh, um, you know, scientific computing, you know, modeling, uh, you, know, uh, uh, you know, combining you know, uh, the traditional wisdom, um, the, you know, mathematics and, um, and, um, and the statistics you know, with deep learning, okay? Um, and there are many, many other examples as well. Okay, so now, um, so those are, you know, from the architecture uh, point of view. And, and, and in terms of, you know, it's, let, let's take it, you know, one, one step back and, and look how this optimum control can model, you know, instead of just the supervised learning, it can, can be used to model reinforced learning and the meta learning as well. Okay, so, so, so here I just did a little bit modification of this control here. We just let this, this control parameter not only depend on time, which is the layer, and also some parameters, it also depends on current state, okay? You know, th this makes this, this control a, some kind of feedback control, okay? Uh, which actually, you know, which is actually model-based, um, you know, reinforcement learning. And so, so if U is independent from the state, it's just typical, you know, supervised learning. And, and if it's, a, uh, you know, if it's, a, you know, depend on the state, it's a typical, you know, you know, RL. And if it's only, you know, if you, if you itself is parameterizable, okay, so this is, you know, this is why we call it learning, learning to learn, that is your parameter has a parameterization. So that's, a, that's one of the typical, you know, meta, uh, meta learning scenarios, but, uh, you know, meta learning can be very, very, um, you know, diverse. So sometimes I cannot distinguish between RL and meta learning. I think RL is, a, well, in, in this formula, RL is a special instance of meta learning. Actually, in our very first paper, we stated that the, Deep, you know, reinforced learning uh, is 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 some kind of meta learning, and all of the four reviewers disagree with that. Um, I think maybe we should, you know, just 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 write down this this formula. Then it, maybe it's easier for them to interpret. It's a it's a it's a hyper network version of uh, you know of of meta learning. Okay, and and with this optimal uh, on the on the right, you can see this very simple demonstration showing that, you know, uh, what you actually learned. Is, is actually a vector field that, you know, that the vector field represented by this, this F that actually steers uh, your, you know, your interpretation or processing of your original data. And, you, you know, originally, this is, for, this is a classification of two different classes. Originally, the data actually disentangled with each other, but the bus, once you, uh, you know, once it's learned, actually, if you pass the data through the dynamics, it got disentangled. Okay, this is just to show how you can, you know, you may use optimal control and dynamic system to understand how actually deep neural networks, you know, interpret it, interpret and process data. Okay, so this is actually a, 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 a I think a 50 layer, um, 50 layer residual network. So the very small, it's a two dimensional problem. I think the, at each residual block, it's a, it's a two, two, three, two fully connected network. Uh, and the co uh, and, and the coefficients, what well, actually the weights are actually shared across different layers. So so that's why the vector field doesn't you know changes its direction along with the layers. So it's a simplified version of that, but it, that's just a demonstration of how this interpretation can help us understand um, you know how uh, you know uh, deep neural networks process data. Okay, so now let me uh, move on to the to the topic is where we're trying to use this actually. 
uh, we had this this perspective actually after we have done a few you know uh, uh, after writing you know, a few papers and then we gradually form this this interpretation. Okay, um, I, I'm just presenting it in the in the backward order um, and just you know help you uh, to have a you know global understanding and then and then dive into you know, special instances and in how we actually use this uh, this concept these ideas. Okay, so this is the work done uh, uh, with. Uh, uh, you know, with uh, with my former student uh, Yiping Lu and 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 uh, Xiao Shui Zhang is a, is a is a student uh, with my colleague uh, Jia Ying Liu. Uh, she's an expert in computer vision. Okay, we just did a very preliminary preliminary attempts of using uh, you know reinforced learning uh, to help us to make a decision in you know and, you know make decision in uh, in image processing. Okay, let me show you the motivation. I think this is very important. It's very nice, uh, you know, motivation. Um, so uh, when we, you know, before, you know, machine learning, um, you know, when we use, uh, use mathematical models to do image denoising, for example, uh, you know, we, uh, one of the prevailing approaches is to using, you know, PDs, where you design a, uh, a diffusion process. Basically, you want to design the C, you know, for, for this specific example, you want to design a C uh, such that when you, uh, you know, when you use the noisy image you not as an initialization and you evolve this differential equations you you know eventually you're going to get or along the path you're going to get you're going to get a, uh, a a nicely denoised image okay this may not be a very good example cuz you know you still can see noise in all of these images but this is just a demonstration okay so um, if you look at this you know this the, this dynamics and you see that um, if your your terminal time t is small then you're going to still have noise in your image if this t, if this time t is too large, um, you know you're gonna you're gonna lose a lot of you know image content. Okay, so 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 in practice, so in practice, this is what we did in the past: is that this t is actually a hyperparameter that you need to tune. Um, you know, basically, it's it's a terminal time that you need to tune, and so that you're you're gonna have optimal image quality. So so this this t is actually not very easy to determine analytically. Okay, I, you know, if it's not impossible, I think it's Maybe it's impossible to determine analytically for general uh, data, uh, and it's highly uh, obviously it depends on the noise level. It also depends on the image itself. So this is a gent demonstration, and this is actually pra you know, practical computation to show that for different image uh, to different noise level. For example, if it's uh, the noise variance is twenty five or you know, standard deviation is twenty five or forty five, and you see that you know the loop time, the tech capital T. You know, changes you're gonna have. You know, you're gonna have a peak. Okay, it, it's gonna rise and then and then falls. And uh, you know, for different noise level and even for different images, um, you know, the, the the location of the peak will be different. Okay, so the so, you know, so the problem, the very first problem we want to solve is, is to solve this problem. Uh, why is this important? Because you know, um, uh, in the past, whenever I give a give a talk, you know, to uh, to people, you know, to to practitioners, they always ask me this question: How do you choose this? Uh, you know, hyperparameter t, um, and and even I use a, a you know a, a regularization plus fidelity. There, 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 are always you know for, for your model there are always at least one hyperparameter that you need to choose, and that hyperparameters mostly depend on the noise level, depend on the image, based you know depends on the data, and and that we have to choose by hand. Okay, can we make it really adaptive? So this is the problem that we want to solve, uh, and mathematically you can actually formulate this problem. As this, uh, well, in the paper we call it you know, moving end control, but but in, in control this is uh, this is a bit this to be more precise this is fixed endpoint because the endpoint is the clean image you want to have, but free time control you don't know how much time you're going to get to those clean image, um, and and in that time is is you know need to be optimized. So in terms of you know the, the language of uh, of deep learning is that the, the number of layers of your networks is not determined. Okay, it, it, it depends on the noise level. It also depends on the uh, uh, on the image itself. It mostly depends on noise level. Okay, um, but it could also depend on uh, on the image itself. So can we? How how do we have a model where you know it's a it, it's an RNN? So basically, we use an RNN to model to model it. Okay, so to model this. Uh, and how can we actually have a model that is actually adaptive in depth? So this is how we actually create it. We call this dynamically unfolding recurrent restorer. Uh, where we introduce a policy uh, network, and this policy network will, will will examine the state, you know, which is the output 
uh, of the restoration unit. Just in, at each layer, we have a network that look at the restored image. And, and if you go back to the setting, well, this, this restoration is this you look at the image that is processed to determine whether it's good or not. Okay. Um, and, uh, and if it's not good enough, okay, uh, you, know, it, you know, we keep on you know, looping. And, and if it's good enough, you know, we terminate this, this loop. Okay. So that's the, the very simple, uh, simple idea. Okay, um, and 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 why this is helpful, you know, how this is actually better than supervised learning, is that so we compared it with well, this is you know a, a non-learning version SOTA uh, for image noise and BM3D and and WNM, and this is a DNCNN denoising uh, CNNs where you just train a very large CNNs uh, by considering actually by considering uh, the noise levels between I think twenty five. And the fifty-five, okay, and you have a you know very gigantic model that can can take care of all of these sigmas. You know that's actually within the range, which is from twenty-five to fifty-five. But if you have a new image that has a distribution shift, okay, for example, the noise level is actually higher than all of the training. You know the model have received, okay. Uh, then you know if you look at DNCN, you have a you know you have a, actually a a, a, a a very steep drop in terms of uh, a peak signal to noise ratios. This is a PSNR, the higher the better, of course. Okay. And but for DORR, because of it's actually adaptive, if the noise level is higher, actually you just need to loop a couple of more times, you know, to properly process them. And 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 actually, you know, th th that's why I think this is the this is actually a meta-learning, it's just learning to learn. They actually, through the training, they already know that if you go from 35 to 45, the loop, the loop time need to be increased. Okay. So it's very easy to extrapolate. So that's, that's one of the empirical, I think this is already empirical study in our group at least to show that actually, you know, reinforced learning has, has better um, um, uh, robustness, this, uh, robustness in terms of distribution shift uh, than, uh, you know, CNNs. Okay, and there's supervised learning actually. And this is just a, a visual demonstration and I'll, I'll skip on that. And, and, and instead of, you know, just image noise, you can also do, uh, uh, do image deblocking and, and we have, Similar findings as well. Okay, so now let me move on to the uh, uh, to the second uh, problem that uh, that well actually this is actually the very first uh, uh, well among you know, you know mostly among the same time okay in two thousand I think in in, in two thousand nineteen um, and, and this is a joint work done by uh, my former you know this undergrad student uh, Yu Fei Wang he's now a PhD candidate. Uh, at Carnegie Mellon, uh, computer science of Carnegie Mellon, and and it's Jushen, and, and and he will, uh, uh, he, now he's working. He he was a, a master's student of mine, and and, and he's trying to, uh, to apply for PhD. Uh, you know, in uh, in our school, uh, and, and so Chao Long uh, was uh, was my former PhD student. Now he's working uh, with Huawei, and 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 and, and though, you know during those, those time from 2017 to 2000. 19, we have done a lot of work on, on, uh, on you know, advancing inverse problem or uh, solving PDEs using machine learning. And this is the, ver the very first attempt that we use uh, reinforced learning to try to solve numerical PDEs. Okay. So um, again, you know, from the you know, same optimal control uh, perspective, the classical solver, you know, usually it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a dynamic system. Okay. Well, what we need is to, we, we need to, let me go back to the global picture once again. Um, so you have your Claxo solver that you, it's, it's often an iterative solver, okay? You can write it uh, in terms of this dynamic system. Uh, there's nothing to control because, you know, everything is determined by hand already, okay? You know, like, like, like for image noise, everything is actually, you know, determined by hand or based on experience. Um, but if you are not satisfied with certain components, for example, this hyperparameter T, okay, you're not satisfied with it, and you can actually introduce a learnable component, and and and, and by doing that, you're going to have a have a control parameter, and you need to de, you know de determine you know, what's you know what's the loss function and what's the data that you actually want to optimize those control parameters. Okay, so this is the actually the idea that we you know or that we use for you know doing a lot of uh, you know modeling in scientific computing and also in computational imaging. Okay, but of, of course this is harder than than it you know sound is just you know how should we pick you know the original dynamics. And how should we determine the control parameters? How should we choose the loss function, you know, so that you can have, uh, you know, good generalization, good model robustness, and good interpretation? So um, this is definitely not easy, but this is the general, you know, principle, the general steps that we that we 
uh, that, that, that we take um, uh, during our research. Okay, so for uh, for uh, for solving a one D conservation law, this is this is a very preliminary attempt it's, that we did. Okay, so we started with a dynamic system, which is uh, which is actually called you know, we know scheme. It's a, it's a weighted essential non oscillatory schemes, um, and uh, it's very standard, very powerful schemes for solving you know uh, nonlinear hyperbolic uh, equations, um, and uh, and this is basically it's a dynamic system, uh, and the key steps in it. Is to determine, you know, to determine the, uh, you know, actually to determine the flux, and you know, based on the, uh, um, you know, based on the, you know, uh, uh, the approximations of the solutions, right? So if you look at this pi f, I write it specific in, in you know, in, in the uh, in the terminology of reinforced learning, okay, just, uh, but for we know this pi f is actually determined, you know, in this specific, uh, in this specific way. So, so the so 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 our initial attempt on you introducing reinforced learning is that um, is to actually you, you know by uh, model this pi as a neural networks um, and and uh, where this neural network can actually look at examine the current states and determine you know how should we actually weights between you know uh, between the numerical approximation of the fluxes in the neighbor stencils. So that's so this is the the conversion from we know to our we know. That is, you know, actually the states are the row speed, uh, which is determined here. And I, I'll skip the details. It's just some states by, you know, this network actually examining the solutions by looking at the at the states, and they actually determine the weights that you see over here. Okay, and and with with the weights, then we're going to have this this approximation f hat, and then we're going to know how to actually advance the dynamics uh, into the next step. Okay. So, so this is the state translation. And I, I think the key here is, is to determine the states and also to determine this, um, uh, this, uh, this actions. Okay. <clears throat> and, and this is a certain loss and these are just some details of the, of the training, but I'll skip all that. So I'm gonna tell you why we wanna do this is because for we know, we know that in smooth regions, it's optimal. Um, well, for, for that given order, it's optimal. But near singularities, this is you know this is why solving nonlinear hyperbolic system you know so hard is it, it it develops similarities in finite time and, and, and the shock actually propagates along with the, uh, with the time okay and, and and what's the ultimate scheme to characterize you know to approximate the shock uh, you know accurately the location and also the propagation speed accurately and this is the, the, this is a very hard question to determine especially in two or three uh, the dimensional spaces okay. So, so we know is not is not guaranteed to be optimal near singularities. We know it's optimal in smooth regions. So the, the reason that we, we wanted to do this is to see whether we can actually, based on purely data-driven approach, to learn a policy that actually you know does relatively you know uh, uh, similar to we know in smooth regions and does better uh, you know near singularities of the uh, uh, you know of the solution. So that's the motivation. So we did. Um, this is the test that we that we did with three different configurations. I, I will not go into the details, but you can just think uh, you can just think that we have three different data distributions in terms of both training and the testing. Okay, we have three different distributions. The data are actually quite different, and we compared with um, with a supervised learning based approach. This is the work uh, 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 on PSPNS in 2019, and also these uh, uh, the physically informed neural networks. Um, by George and, uh, and, and, and his, uh, his colleagues, okay? Um, and the general assessment is that RL, like I said in the previous uh, work, is actually, it's, it's uh, auto distribution transferability is excellent, right? So you can train on one setting and you can easily test on other settings. Okay, so, so those are all the off diagonals where our, we know we have a, this, you know, this, uh, this tick mark, okay? The question mark here for L3D is that we couldn't, train it to converge. We use the code they provide online, but we couldn't train it. And this cross means it actually fails to transfer to other settings, okay? It, it, can, it can do pretty good, you know, in distribution um, generalization, but it doesn't do well in auto distribution, you know, uh, uh, transfer, okay? And this is a com comparison of the computational speed. Okay, so this is a demonstration of, of uh, you know, for classical we know, um, and, and versus the, the RL, uh, Enhance the we know scheme, you know what what you know, what our enhanced we know scheme is actually it does better near singularities, you know which are those kinks that you see. 
If you look at the weights that are all selected, the inference okay, versus the, the, the winner weights, you can see that they are actually quite different um, in both sharp regions and in both smooth regions. We, we couldn't interpret you know, how, why this is the case. The reviewer also asked that, you know, can we actually make an analytical uh, you know, interpretations of, of this, this pi function? I don't know. Um, and, you know. All I can say is that they do something differently so that uh, it, can, you know, it can approximate uh, you know, the singularity is better. It looks like it, it's actually more aggressive um, than uh, the window scheme. Maybe that's the reason why, because they know when to be aggressive and when to not be aggressive because the training of it is, is to make sure that we minimize, um, actually we minimize the, uh, the local infinity norm of the, of the loss because of the, they want the, act, the solution to be entirely accurate. Okay, so, so just a, a brief summary of you know, why we want to learning to describe rather than just learn the discretization, which is quite different. Um, I think the uh, the main reason is that it's actually it's it's actually meta learning like, and also this policy is actually it's 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 a non greedy policy. It makes sure that it's actually accurate in in the long run, right? If you train it RL, it's actually the error actually back propagated, uh, you know, from the end, so that you know it's it's a it's a policy is actually non greedy. But when human design a uh, you know a, a a scheme. You know, sometimes you know it's it's easy to to, to design greedy algorithm. It's it's difficult uh, to design a non greedy algorithm. Okay, uh, and and the method learning like to make it I think make it you know learning the principles of this algorithm so that it can have very good um, uh, auto diffusion uh, transferability. Okay, so the third work I want to discuss, um, which is also quite different from from the previous two, is is trying to. Uh, to tackle the problem of uh, of uh, you know, of image acquisition, um, and and we did this specific for CT uh, imaging, and this is a joint work uh, with with Zhu Shen and Yu Fei Wang, you know, who are also the the uh, the, uh, the your students did the work on the on the previous one, okay, and also my colleagues uh, Du Fan Wu from Harvard um, Mass General Hospital, and uh, and my colleague uh, Xu Yang from UC San Diego, okay, and and, and myself. So. Um, for CT, I mean, actually, for a lot of imaging problems, um, they, they can formulate it as a linear inverse problem or approximate it uh, by a linear inverse problem. Um, and uh, and the, the traditional wisdom is to formulate this the regularized you know, uh, uh, optimiz uh, optimization model. Or if you use unroll dynamic, you start with the, with the classical regularized uh, model and choose an algorithm. Uh, and, and then you have your dynamics, and then you decide you know, which part is learnable and which part. Uh, are not and, and and define the loss and then you train it you know like you train in your networks okay um, so so for uh, for for a typical image reconstruction we assume that this a is uh, uh, is known okay so for CT it could be just uh, you know just equal angular or or, or, or equal angular you know scanning uh, and and uh, or you know for compressed sensing tell us that well a could have some randomness. And, 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 and so that you can actually reduce the number of rows of this A, uh, you can still robustly recover uh, the image data that uh, the image data U, okay. But actually this, all of these are not actually optimal. Can we actually select a scanning, a scanning scheme that is, that is adaptive to you? Okay, this is the question we're trying to answer. For in terms of CT, if you simplify this problem a little bit, um, so what you what we essentially want to do is that for given a given a subject U, we want to determine uh, first of all the the number of projections and also the specific you know angles of those projections because we don't we don't know the total number of projections projection that's going to be needed and we don't know where we actually you know take those uh, take those scans okay the the actual angles and also at each given angle what's the optimal a dose that we want to, you know, what's the, what's the optimal dose that we want to uh, apply to the patient, okay, so that the total dose is kept, you know, uh, within a safety range, okay, so those, those are the questions that we want to, uh, you know, we want to answer, so basically the, uh, the, the, the angles, including the number of angles and, and the specific angles, um, and also the, uh, the number of, uh, the, uh, you know, the, the amount of dose at each angle. It turns out that you can actually formulate this problem, um, and as a matter of fact, many uh, you know, uh, uh, sensing problems, um, you know, using mixed integer programming. Okay, the, the, the integer uh, variable is just the angles uh, and, uh, uh, you know, and the, uh, 
uh, and the real value uh, 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 variable is actually the, you know, the dose uh, in this specific case, okay? Um, so, you know, determining an adaptive sampling strategy uh, in CG is called dynamic scanning, uh, where actually there has been some studies on that as well. Um, and I think the most related work to ours is you, know, you can use RL to, uh, to do a STEM, okay, transmission electron microscopy, and also you can use it to do MRI. Um, and if you don't use RL, you can, you, you can use Monte Carlo tree search. Um, but we know that RL is, you know, is, is, is superior in terms of its, its exploration uh, power uh, so that you can get a better, you know, get close, at least closer to, uh, to the global optimal, you know, for an NP problem. Okay. And also RL has been, I think it's a, it's a rising field of using RL to tackle combinatorics optimizing problem. So this is my, my personal opinion. I think it's very promising to use reinforced learning uh, to tackle, you know, mixed integer programming or, or you know, combinatorial optimization. Some people show that a combinatorial optimization can be, uh, you know, proven to be equivalent to a MIP's uh, mixed integer program, if I'm not mistaken on that. Um, and well, the reason is that I think R is superior to, you know, to solving problems that is actually combinatorics in nature. So that's, a, that, that, that's what I said in the, in the abstract, um, because the decision is very complicated. Okay, um, so now back to the specific problem of you know of the CT imaging problem, um, the MDP, the Markov distribution process, they actually formulated like this. So the state is actually the current projections that we have already taken. Okay, the projection data that we already collected, and also the current dose uh, that we have already used. You know, up to a certain time tau, uh, which is just the tau is just we include one angle at a time. Okay, and, and, and what's the remaining dose? If the remaining dose hits zero, then we stop. Okay, and the action is, is that, so, okay, so given the current state, the action is what's the, the next angle that we, we want to include to take, you know, to take the projection and also how much dose we want to allocate to that angle. Okay, so these are the actions and the rewards is actually the PSNR gain of, you know, by, by taking such action. All right, so that's why it's the PSR between, between I, which is the reconstructed image, IT is the reconstruction image using a certain reconstruction uh, algorithm, okay? And, and because, you know, because of, you know, training, we need to do this very, a lot. So, uh, so our experience that you, you, know, you probably shouldn't use a very uh, time-consuming, you know, sophisticated, you know, regularization-based image reconstruction, you can use a, uh, what we did is we use SART to algebraic reconstruction algorithm. Um, or you can actually feed a, 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 a deep model, um, you know, to do image reconstruction because the inference time is very, you know, it's very, you know, it's, it's very, it's quite efficient uh, uh, in terms of inferencing. Um, and because we want to determine the dose, if you, if you allocated the dose, uh, if the, the allocated dose is small, then the noise level is high. Okay, if the, the dose is large, uh, the, the noise level is low, but you're using up the, you know, the, the, the dose very quickly so that you, you know, that, that will reduce the number of angles that, that is allowed, you know, to, to, to look at the subject. So it's a, it's a trade-off. And, 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 and we actually model the noise level, you, you know, using this, this physical, you know, uh, relation. Okay. And this is a policy network. Um, and the value network, you know, it's, it's construct, it's very similar in structure. It's just the output is, you know, is, uh, is different. So I'll just skip that details. And the training is that we use AAPM, um, um, uh, a CT image data set, and we use PPO for the training, and we use SART to evaluation the reward, and we test it on, on another 350 CT images. Um, and we compare with uh, you know, uniform sampling with, uh, uh, with automated exposure control and dynamic sampling with entropy method, because it's fast. Um, or you know, if you use some more sophisticated dynamic sampling, it's very, very slow. Okay, um, and, and the proposed RL-based approach. And also, you know, without retraining, this is very important, without retraining, because we want to know whether we actually learn a superior scanning strategy that is independent from image reconstruction. So, so we train it using SRT, but without retraining, we also combine it with the TV reconstruction, wavelet reconstruction, and also with a pre-trained primal deal network, which is, you know, very standard, uh, you know, very, um, actually very popular deep networks. Uh, for CT image reconstruction. Okay, so this is the uh, uh, this is the result, 
and also uh, the noise levels are actually different from the uh, from the training set. Um, and uh, um, and what you can see here is that uh, with RL, you know, look, going from right to left, regardless of which reconstruction you choose, uh, RL is 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 always a better you know a better scanning strategy in terms of PSNR and also in terms of structure similarity. And in particular, when it combined with deep models, you know, you can see the gain, the improvement, the PSNR improvement is 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 is, is the most significant ones. Okay, so these are the the means and the standard deviations among all uh, 350 CD images. In our paper, we have a description, you know, so that so that you can see that it's actually, um, you know, the improvement is actually better than this this average. The whole distribution actually shifted. If you use RL, the whole distribution of PSNR and structural similarity actually shifted towards you know towards um, you know towards the right, the, the higher values. Okay, so this is just a visual demonstration, um, and this just shows that our RL. Doesn't just learn a trivial, you know, a purely random or uniform, you know, dis distributed angles. Okay, it actually does something, uh, you know, non-trivial. And uh, and and for you know, among all of, all of the 365, uh, 300, 350 images, you see two clusters of number of angles. So the number of angles also varies for different, uh, uh, for different, uh, for different images. And we have two clusters, and we took. Uh, took out the the image the representative image of those two classes. So you can see actually these are actually two different uh, z slices. Uh, you know of a you know of three. What well, could be from different patient, but basically uh, uh, two different slices, and you see that the image content looks quite different. And those are the just the distribution of the those. So you you see these variabilities, uh, just to show that you know it does some kind of you know personalized uh, uh, scanning because you see that you know they choose number of angles and specific angles differently. And also they allocate those differently for different images. Okay, so now let me quickly summarize. I think it's almost 50 minutes. So uh, the message I'm trying to convey is that, well, you can regard deep learning um, you know, more or less as optimal control. And, and, and this is not very accurate. You can make things accurate. You know, people do you know, a theoretic, all kinds of theoretical analysis on that, but, uh, but um, um, for me, that uh, you know, I don't really want it to be very accurate because it it, it gives us ideas. It's it's a give us a way to organize our you know thoughts on the interpretations of various deep learning you know technique uh, techniques you know into this this rather unified you know framework that really helps a lot in terms of modeling and uh, algorithmic design. Okay, and the architecture, the discrete architecture, uh, you know, uh, of of CNNs. Can be related as 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 discrete dynamics, you know, discrete ODs and discrete uh, PDs, and uh, and I think our group are among the first to do, to explore the structure similarity between uh, you know differential equations and uh, uh, and, and convolutional uh, neural networks. Actually, this you know the uh, the original observation we made in our two ICML papers in 2018, OD nets and PD nets, actually based on our even earlier theoretical work on drawing connection between wavelets and uh, um, and, uh, and you know, wavelet model and the PD based models. Okay. Um, and uh, uh, currently, we believe that combining traditional wisdom with learning, I think it's it's very beneficial uh, in in many different ways. Okay. Um, and uh, and and there is a great potential of deep learning in scientific computing. I think computational imaging is one. Okay. For example, sampling. Is mostly a you know mixed integer programming and it's completely target in nature. I think RL is a, is potentially it's a is a it's a, it's a, it's a magnific magnificent tool uh, to tackle that problem. And 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 for CT we demonstrate that it could be you know a, a very good way. And and, and people has uh, has used that for for MRI and for other you know imaging modalities as well. Okay, but there are more. Computer imaging is a, is a very very large field. Medical imaging is just a subset of. Of that and, and of course we have bioimaging and, and all other imaging but that is, right now me and my student my colleagues at Peking University we're working on using you know we're trying to be using RL or using control uh, to uh, you know to uh, to improve uh, uh, cryo ET okay um, and, uh, and design optimization for example EDA IR4 and, and meta uh, material designs and it's uh, you know the object you want to optimize you know sometimes it's a you know, for uh, you know, for airfoil, it's it's a shape optimization, okay, and um, and, uh, and and assuming that you have a, a good surrogate model for, you know, for uh, you know for fluid dynamics, you can actually use 
reinforced learning to iterative update the shapes. Okay, so that uh, so that for example the, the, the lift and drags are actually optimized uh, in a way that people actually are doing that uh, in in in, uh, in mechanical engineering. Okay, uh, EDA as well. I, uh, I think last year uh, you know, Google had a paper on using reinforcing to do uh, to do a cheap placement, but you can do a lot. A lot more than simply doing uh, cheap uh, cheap placement, and also meta material design. You know, how do you actually design the material and so that it satisfies a certain, you know, uh, uh, macro you know properties. Um, and uh, and in general, mixed integer programming, um, you see this comes out a lot in industry. And again, you know, I think RL is is perfect for that. So so all of this problem shares one thing in common that is it's actually completely dark in nature. Um, and uh, if you regard RL as a self-adaptive, self-improving optimization algorithm, I think they're they're good. At least it's in my own but honest opinion that it's actually very promising to use deep RL to tackle these problems. So with that, I'll conclude my talk and thanks for your attention. Thank you, Bi. Um, uh, Xin, do you want to uh, take over for leading the discussion? Sure. Oh, thanks for, uh, let me open my video. Yeah, thanks for this uh, great uh, talk uh, that includes a lot of applications. So my first question uh, is about uh, image restoration. So um, my question is uh, in a very high level perspective, uh, what's, uh, um, how the two parts influence with uh, each other, for example? Uh, uh, um, uh, uh, Mm, for example, uh, if using a small, a very small, simple uh, Im image restoration unit, um, and, and what's, what's the difference be between using a very small, simple restoration unit and a very complex restoration unit? So uh, are they uh, going to infer, uh, are they going to infer a policy unit? And uh, for example, running maps, uh, this first question, and then the other question is uh, in, uh, in the other round, how the policy unit uh, influence the uh, restoration unit? Uh, well, <clears throat> the policy, okay, the policy, uh, I did include details, it's actually in the paper. Uh, first of all, the restoration unit, I think it's a baby unit. Uh, it's not very complicated. Uh, if you use a more complicated version, well, in general, if you have a more complicated uh, version of that, um, and if assuming that you have enough data, you know, you, you can have improved results, assuming that you won't running into trouble of training. Um, but, but for us, we try to avoid using a very complex model because we have, you know, it's, it's you know, training has always been a problem for us. Um, you know, we're not saying that it's not, it's not a good. Well, I'm not saying that it's, it's it's not a good idea to use a more complex model. It's just for us, we also have the problem, you know, with the with the training. If you have no problem with the training, and I think using a more complex model and assuming that you have enough data is in general, it's it's uh, it's it's more beneficial. Um, and and I think for policy unit, I don't recall the details. You could look at uh, look at the paper or the code. Uh, well, it's 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 only a. I think it. It, it outputs one and zero just to to tell whether we should include one uh, one layer or not. Okay, so that's the what the you know, what the policy unit actually does, and I I don't remember the the actual architecture of it. Maybe it's 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 a ResNet. I don't I you know I'm sorry I don't I don't I don't recall the details. Um, you can uh, you could uh, either check the paper or or maybe you can ask the uh, the authors of the of the paper. You know they did all the detailed work. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, I see. You said uh, that if you um, can use a very simple structure, simple structure to do the whole thing. Yeah. So I think that's a, a beautiful thing of the RL part. So another uh, question I want to uh, discuss is about uh, CT application. So uh, is there any chance that I uh, introduce this amazing algorithm into the real product? And uh, if uh, it could, uh, what uh, biggest beneficial that uh, uh, we can uh, get uh, from this always, I mean, in a uh, uh, product level or very, oh, yes. Okay, um, so so this work, actually all of these, all, all of the three works are proof of concept um, uh, works. 
Um, and uh, it's uh, it's far away from you know actual industry you know industrial applications. So those the, those are just papers. I'm just to be entirely honest. And for CT, um, the current CT, the, actually the current you know uh, medical CT cannot really allocate those like suggested by the uh, by the RL, right? It uh, you know it's it, it's it's um, um, for stack, static CT that you can, but static CT is it's still not commercialized yet. It's still, uh, you know, it's still under development, research and development. Uh, for general CT, uh, for you know, for current commercial CT, you cannot really implement this this scanning strategy. So what, what we did is that we showed that if you can, well, assuming that in ten years the static CT or other type of you know CT imaging, uh, you know, can realize that, then maybe we can go beyond the compressed sensing, right? Just you know, random random or uniformly you know, scanning and, and you can actually have a beneficial of that. So CT may not be a good example to show, you know, uh, to show, well, we use CT because we're very familiar with CT um, and I've been working on CT for, for 10 years. So we just use your CT as an example. I think, uh, uh, I think more viable, you, know, you need to select a modality where you can actually control the machine. So that's why I mentioned crowd ET in the end. I've been searching for image modalities for a while, and I think at least at the current stage, you know, the, the uh, you know the, the, the crowd, you know, electro, you know, a microscope developed by Thermo Fisher, they actually they have actually APIs to allow you to actually control, uh, you know, the imaging process. So that's why I'm I'm working with you know with crowd ET because you can actually you can actually control, you can actually do things like this. But for CT, it's uh, you know it's highly commercialized, and uh, you know it's uh, um, you know or or uh, or static CT is not mature enough uh, to allow you to to actually you know use it on patients. Yeah, but but there are many many other examples. I believe there are many other things about in bioimaging where you can actually control the imaging system so that you can you can you know you can you can optimize the sensing together with the reconstruction. Actually, I think you should unify all three steps of computer imaging sensing imagery construction and also image analysis. Um, you know, we have a work that actually combines reconstruction and image analysis um, and, and shows that you can, you know, you can have a, 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 you know, a benefit by actually combining, you know, those two steps in terms of, you know, a, a task dependent image quality metric. And also, you know, you can improve uh, image analysis um, you know, accuracy as well. Okay. Right. Okay, thank you. So, yeah, I don't, how uh, any more questions on my side? Thank you. Right. Could I ask you a few questions? Sure. Uh, I think that recently the, there's many people using like uh, the PDEs to generate the data, like a uh -huh. GAN type of things, because they right. try to combine the PDEs with the GAN type of things. Right, right. And uh, in particular, like a score based model method or diffusion method, all these are related to PDEs. In right. particular, if you are using different kernel size to smooth the data, and then mm -hmm. you, you know, then this essentially is a kind of some PDE type of things. And I'm just thinking about how it's possible to really uh, use combine the reinforced learning with that. Maybe with some of your method proposal here to solve that kind of issues. Um, that's an interesting question. Well, it depends on you know whether in, in in those data generation whether you can actually break down into steps, where at each step you have a you have a you know discrete decision making needs to be done, or some of some of them are discrete, some of them are continuous. Um, and, and, and those are those decisions affect the results, either efficiency or accuracy a lot. If you can do that, then I think RL is a, is a very good tool. And, and most likely it's gonna, you know, it's gonna be significant, it's gonna significantly advance the, uh, the results. Yeah, um, I, actually we, we thought about using RL to do, uh, um, you know, to do, you know, uh, 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 inverse problems uh, when mm -hmm. we, you know, start, start working on on micro PDs. Um, it's just uh, for for a lot of you know simulation uh, problems, um, the decisions are not really discrete. For example, the micro PD, the micro PD uh, case that we that we worked work, worked at. Okay, so the you know the um, uh, the actions are actually continuous. Uh, 
and uh, you don't have the full advantage, in my opinion, you, you, you're not actually using the RL, the power of RL to the fullest, <laughs> if your actions are all actually continuous. Um, and, and we try to use RL to determine, you know, the, the, the selection of the stencils. I, I think, I, I think the, you know, the best way of using, maybe one of the example is to, to do you know, two or three D, um, you know, fluid simulation uh, with adaptive grids or adaptive, you know, just with, with certain adaptation where the adaptation has, is actually inferred by, uh, you know, by this, this, you know, by this uh, uh, policy network pi. Uh, but the computation is training. I don't know whether that's uh, a doable thing. But 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 those you know if you wanted to you know determine the mesh, um, and, and and determine you know the, the, the selection of a local approximation scheme among a finite set of dictionary, those are discrete decision makings. Mm -hmm. So 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 with that, I think RL you know could be could be a very good. Choice. As a matter of fact, I think um, you know the best paper of 2012 or 2020. Um, they actually do this you know, for image processing, right? You just, you know, you have a, a you know, at each iteration of what I think for each grid location, you have a, you know, you have a, a collection of, you know, possible, you know, of, of, of plausible actions that that this RL actually you know, used, you know, to, you know, to, to to make a selection based on those uh, possible actions, and, and so that you have have a, you know, RL based uh, image restoration scheme. Um, so, so I, I think the general principle is that you know if you can, if you can decompose your your algorithm into into different steps, and each step, if you have, you know, just you know, a uh, uh, discrete decisions making, you know, you need to make discrete decision making, and I think RL is a um, is a is a good tool. Okay, assuming that you can do simulations and or you have abundance of data, because RL is as you may already know that RL is more. Uh, you know, data hunger, the supervised learning. Okay, thank you. Sure. Um, thank you all for the great discussion. Um, if we don't have other questions, I think we can stop here. Uh, thank you all for being here with us today. We will see you uh, next time. Thank right. you. Okay, thank you. Thank you guys. Again, happy new year. Happy new year. Happy new year.